Film Junkies. Uh, we are reviewing um, Pig. It's not even called The Pig, it's just called Pig. And it stars Nicolas Cage, Nick Cage, who's on an absolute tear with some of his most more ludicrous and sort of outlandish and uh, gonzo performances. Uh, you know, he's done more gonzo performances in the last sort of three years than he has done his whole career. Uh, but it also stars Alex Wolf, who we'll also know, recently seen in Old, uh, was in Hereditary, a, a cracking young actor um, who's slowly getting older, weirdly. Um, so, Pig, what is it? We saw the trailer. Um, it has all the kind of, um, all the hallmarks, all the motifs, all the traits of yet another batshit crazy Nick Cage project. And in that sense, it really is. But where recent films of his like Mandy or Colour Out of Space or the soon to be released new one, which we reacted to the trailer to, I can't quite remember it, The Kings of the Sun or some weird title. Um, whereas they all go into a sort of rageful, dark pit of strange, contorted, self-expressive, surreal madness, all of which is just what Nick feels on an average Friday night. Um, this film takes us there but then takes us in a different direction. It's a really curious film, this, which is why I wanted to do uh, quite a brief review. Unfortunately, this is gonna be one of those films that not a lot of you go and watch. And yet I would say to you, go and watch it. It's not long, it's about, what is it, an hour and a half long? Uh, yes, in fact, it's just an hour and a half long. It's not long, but it's odd. It has some wondrous lines in it, like, um, I'm looking for my pig. Um, there's also another line in it, which uh, if you're faint of heart and you don't like swearing, I don't fuck my pig. Uh, delivered in Nick Cage lines. If you don't like Nick Cage, you will hate this film. If you're an agnostic on Nick Cage and you're looking to be convinced, I would argue, I would argue that I think this film is the first of any in recent years where you don't have to sort of let go of yourself and go with the madness of it all to enjoy him. You can actually enjoy quite a nuanced performance. I mean, there's, there's rarely anything nuanced about Nick Cage. So what's this about? So this is about a uh, Portland, Oregon, based former chef who's now living in the wilds of Oregon. I've filmed out there, it's beautiful. He's in this sort of lush, almost monsoon-like kind of trees that are ancient. You know, the absolute antithesis of an urban, modern tech lifestyle. He lives there with his pig, he lives in a shack, and with his pig, he, uh, his, he takes his pig out for walks, uh, foraging and they find truffles and of course truffles are incredibly valuable uh, almost sort of mushroomy type things that are incredibly rare incredibly hard to find uh, but can be sold for ludicrous prices in top-end restaurants and, and what have you um, I don't know if anyone else caught it there was a documentary recently called the truffle hunters I really enjoyed it if you haven't seen it please check it out it's like a trip to Italy for 80 minutes uh, in the company of some of the most eccentric truffle hunters though in that film they're all doing it with truffle hunting dogs um, so this is a truffle hunting pig. Nick Cage lives in a hut, a shack. He sells the truffles that his pigs, pig finds to the Alex Wolf character, uh, who takes him into town, sells them all the restaurants and all that kind of stuff. Suffice it to say, things don't go well. Someone, some untowards, drive into the work, drive into the Oregon forests, they beat him up, they smash him to a pulp, and they steal his pig. And so then the film becomes, I read somewhere, someone saying it's almost a John Wick kind of, you know, where's my pig? And, and I want my pig. And who's got my pig? I mean, I could sit over there and listen to Nick Cage saying all those sentences probably on a loop for about three days and not tire of it. But more seriously, what this transpires and what this sort of moves into is, yes, he's looking for his pig. It, it becomes revealed to us over time that he was not just a sort of famous chef, but he was a chef, a much heralded chef, a chef almost sort of messianic in his, oh, you're him. I mean, I can only imagine a sort of contemporary equivalent would be, you know, Gordon Ramsay, except he would swear. I don't know, perhaps, or Marco Pierre White, you know, he's sort of a bit craggy at the edges, a bit whatever. This is a film, I tell you what, if you're a food lover, or if you're not just a food lover as in dishes, but if you are a believer in the idea that food and eating and what food and the eating of food is about is about far more than just the food on the plate, um, I think you'll get a lot out of this film. It, it's a film that parks the importance of food and eating right at the heart of what being a human is about. But suffice it to say, we have those elements of a classic Nick Cage film. For example, he goes off on this weird journey via some strange drug addicts, 
told that someone else they know might have taken his pig. He, he uncovers a sort of fighting ring beneath a hotel that I think he used to work in or he used to, he was a cook in. And there's this curious scene where he takes himself down there and he allows himself to be punched repeatedly in the face. It's quite a horrendous scene. And this scene where he kind of uncovers this fight club, this underground fight club, offers his face up essentially as kind of, I don't know, fodder, cannon fodder, just to be pummeled and punched, just to get some tip off on where his pig is. Um, for the rest of the film, Nick Cage walks around with a blood encrusted head. And it's really funny because there are moments where people are going, are you okay? Do you want to wash up? And no, he doesn't. All the while moving through this, Nick Cage is like a, a slow moving sort of iceberg, but not white, a sort of dark, melancholic iceberg. There are none of those Nick Cage freak outs, none of those Nick Cage sort of moments of hysteria and surreal kind of rah! and all that kind of stuff. No, this is, this is a constantly brooding, thoughtful, but persistent Nick Cage in this film. And so it transpires through a variety of reveals that actually Alec, the Alex Wolf character's dad is behind the hijack and kidnapping of Nick Cage's pig. And he goes to this one particular restaurant, which is, is one of those high-end restaurants. I forget the name of that Spanish chef who does sort of foam and essence of egg. And so you have it placed on the end of a spoon and it's like you inhale it up your nose type thing. And that's a dish, you know. So it's very wanky, it's very show-offy. It's that sort of cuisine that, does, that bears no relationship to food. It's like a scientific experiment. And I think there's one of the strongest, most meaningful scenes, which I was trying to translate to Nads. I said, Nads, if you could just watch this one scene. Because the guy who runs this restaurant, and Nick Cage is in there all covered in blood, wanting to talk to the guy who runs the restaurant, because the guy who runs the restaurant used to work for Nick Cage in the film. And Nick Cage basically unpacks, the, the, the chef comes out, sits down with Nick Cage, and Nick Cage says, why are you running this restaurant? What's this about? This isn't real, the people aren't real, the food isn't real, the customers aren't real. Your vision isn't real. When you worked for me, you wanted to, you wanted to start an, an English pub. What's this? And it was a really important moment, not just about sending up the wankiness and the pretentiousness, but the hollowness and the emptiness of, you know, fame, if you like, in any quarter, or being in this world. He, this film, very cleverly, and this scene for me manifests it with, you know, in, in its sort of, in a, in a sense, in the way that it skewers the food world and the food, the wanky food world. Um, this film makes you realise that there's a whole set of other things in life that we need to connect to, to make life more meaningful. And I think this film is a really important film to come, actually out of lockdown. You know, everyone has been pushed onto the back feet. Everyone's been made to rethink their lives and rethink what our purposes are. Everyone's been made to re-evaluate what we're connected to in ourselves, in this world, to each other. What are our passions? What do we want? What are we doing for ourselves? What are we doing for the sake of others, perceptions of us? What are we doing for the sake of just staying alive? And what are we doing? What do we actually need to be alive? And I think Nick Cage's character in this shows you don't need an awful lot. In his case, all he needed was a pig, which is why he moves around, the, moves around Oregon saying, where's my pig? Um, all the while, there's a really curious buddy movie thing going on between Alex Wolf and Nick Cage. So it becomes almost paternalistic, father, son, sort of master and sort of acolyte. You know, and that's curious and that's lovely. There's a moment in the middle of this where, where Nick Cage prepares a meal for Alex Wolf's father because they're trying to get the information out about this, about where the pig is. And as I say, we've discovered that Alex Wolf's father is involved in this pig abduction. And they cook this beautiful meal. But what, there's this, again, the importance of food is placed center stage and on the center of the plate. Nick Cage recreates exactly the same meal that Alex Wolf's dad had when he had his first meal or his last meal with his wife, who's now passed away. Nick Cage, the chef in this film, remembered that very meal. And at one point he says, I remember every single meal I cook and I remember everyone I cook it for. Wow, how he could make that both life-affirming, but slightly menacing at the same time and chilling was quite something. And in the act of so accurately and painstakingly recreating this meal, he triggers an admission of guilt from Alex Wolf's father. And suddenly we discover that actually, sadly, this is a spoiler review, something not very nice has happened to, to his pig. Um, and in a weird way, you would think that the film should filter out and peter out at this point, but there were, 
This, this is a film of strange moments where you're encouraged to go down the obvious routes of a, a thriller, of uh, a sort of whodunit, uh, a sort of revenge thriller. Um, you know, all, the, all those tropes are in there. But then it has moments where it just stops and it pushes you back and it makes you say, what is the point of all this stuff? What is the point of what we're chasing? You know, you feel that Nick Cage hasn't got something because he's opted out of it. He's lost his profile. He's lost his celebrity. He's lost his name in a sense. And there's a lot of, a lot of talk about, you know, you were this, who were you, you were that, we know who you are and all that kind of stuff. He's lost all of that, but has he? Has he not really, is he not really experiencing what it truly means to be alive? Is, is he absolutely nose up against life? And then I, I was left thinking at the end of this, you know, truffles are a weird thing. They smell so earthy. You know, people talk, I think the reason they're so valued is that they have a quality to them that's so otherworldly, but so completely of the earth and of, of time and of regeneration and degeneration, all this kind of stuff. And then I thought, no, this film is like a truffle. This film is like one big foraged truffle with Nick Cage at the center of it. I mean, imagine finding that under your tree in your garden, because they tend to be around trees. Um, and I think this is as rich and as thoughtful and as, as to be savoured as a flake of a finely foraged and nuzzled out truffle found by, by his pig. And so it's a tragic story. It's kind of a life affirming story. It's a mindful story. There's, there's, there's peace in it. There's real upset. There's real tenderness. Going back to the scene that I kind of didn't talk about in any more detail, but that moment where him and Alex Wolf cook this meal together for Alex Wolf's father. It's done in slow-mo, it's hovered. This film isn't rushed, it's beautifully shot. It's shot in umbers and ochres and browns and all these kind of, you know, beautiful color palette. And at the center of it, there's this brooding, moody, sort of prowling kind of character of Nick Cage who, and I have to say, I think it's one of his best performances. What can I say? I think this, this, this is Nick Cage at his best. You know, I thought it was going to go a certain route, but bar the scene where he has his head pump, punched and punched and punched and pummeled to a pulp, the rest of this film is actually an incredibly, uh, I found thought provoking and, and moving experience. Um, and so, yeah, I would give this, I would fully recommend it. If you've got 90 minutes, why not? It's weird. I mean, it's weird. Don't get me wrong, it's weird. It's strange as fuck, um, but all the better for it. And I think Nick Cage's choices are just getting more and more varied, weird. Keep doing them, because this is where the richness of cinema lies for me. Um, I would give this, I'd probably give this 92 out of 100, both as a curiosity, but also it's not about what you think it's about. It's about a pig, but it's actually a film in which a pig barely features. It's about a missing pig, but it's also about what a pig means to us and how a pig, we all need to belong. We all feel a connection. We all have a relationship with something. And is that relationship actually with ourselves? If you remove the thing that we're dependent on, should we be more dependent on ourselves? Is this a, you know, this film is like a journey. It's like a sort of heart of darkness. And of course, how can you, you know, how can you fault a film that essentially ends? with its own rendition of Bruce Springsteen's I'm on Fire. There's something earthy. This is an earthy film. It's of the earth, it's about the earth, and Nick Cage is the earth.